Okay. So Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back. And now let's enjoy our package config and package conf both with Andrei Shadura. Enjoy Yay. it. So many people have come, but I expected this to be. I didn't expect this to be full either, but well, I expected that more, more than three people would show up, except the video team. Yeah, uh, so <coughs> um, the idea of this both was to discuss the ways and the, the general strategy to migrate Debian from package config to package conf. Um, uh, it doesn't seem like there's a huge interest in this, except <laughs> from two people in this room. Uh, so, yeah, I'll just talk a little bit about uh, why I propose this in general. So, um, to those who don't know what package config is, other people in this room who don't know about it. Right, so, anyway, okay, so I'll just say the so package conf is, is a way to specify, let me <coughs> specify the way to link against them, basically, C flags, uh, linker flags, and other things. And um, right now we have two implementations of this standard. One of them is the original one, uh, hosted at free desktop, if I remember correctly. Package config, which is kind of used by Debian, and another one is package conf of, developed by um, one of the Alpine developers, <coughs> and uh, we've had it in Debian for about about 10 years, I guess, or something, more or less since the inception of the of that implementation. Uh, since that time, package conf gained uh, better compatibility uh, with package config uh, to the point that many other distributions have switched it completely from package config. Uh, that's not been really developed these days. Uh, as far as I remember, there are, they apply bug fixes, but there's no active development happening. Uh, on the contrary, package conf is being developed quite actively. They provide a library interface, uh, which can be used by other tools to parse package config files. Um, and they have other useful features. Uh, one of the important things for, two important things for Debian are, <coughs> first of all, it doesn't depend on glib, so it's easy to bootstrap systems uh, using package conf because it breaks the loop on, um, on glib. And um, another thing which is very useful is that it provides a better interface for cross-building because it supports uh, a feature called personality, so you can d basically tell it to pick up files from different locations depending on, uh, for example, the architecture. Um, so here I've got some, well, this is obviously the, this is the page uh, made by the upstream comparing features of package config. Package, package config. Um, so Obviously, one of the things they say up front, it's not bug for bug compatible. So if uh, something depends on a specific output of package config or on some bugs in it, they, they won't try to preserve it and they f try to fix those <laughs> issues. Uh, and for example, the arbitrary reordering of fragments and things, that's not something they strive to keep. Uh, they try to optimize the uh, dependencies uh, when they uh, uh, traverse a graph and um, other things. They also support some features that package conf doesn't support at all, uh, like C, C flags private, for example. Um, and um, here's the page prepared by Fedora project as a part of their strategy to move to package conf from package config. Fedora in this case is slightly in a better position than Debian because they can just go and change the whole thing at once because of how they manage uh, the project. Um, in Debian we have strong maintainership, so it's, I don't see an easy way to do that and that's why one of the reasons I call for this both so that we can discuss approaches to that migration. So I have uh, two remarks regarding that. If you say it makes cross uh, bootstrapping easier, you need to be more precise about what bootstrapping is. 
because for cross bootstrap we actually don't have a problem the cross building case already does break the existing loop so the only case where a switch really may help is if you consider native bootstraps uh, well um, the other thing is um, Wait, I forgot it. But, uh, so I <laughs> move on to the third thing. Question, uh, do you have any ways on improving the situation for difficult users such as PostgreSQL and LLVM, both of which refuse to use package config because it doesn't fully serve their needs? Hmm. What exactly are those needs? That is a difficult question. I tried convincing them that they can use private fields and package config files, and that wasn't particularly successful. So maybe you can reach out to these communities and mm -hmm. figure out whether you can switch them over to package config. Mm -hmm. so, so for PostgreSQL... Is it, is it we, that they refuse to use it because the original implementation doesn't support those features? Uh, that's... <coughs> Not an obvious. So PostgreSQL actually provides a PC file now in addition to PG config and LLVM exclusively does LLVM dash config. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably that's a good idea to, to, to do that. Uh, if you say that they may require things that... Yeah, that would be an additional selling point, right? Yeah, probably. Probably would be. Good idea. Probably should so add this. So, getting into contact with LLVM and Postgres may be a good idea there. Just for the uh, apparently arch, uh, does this um, they, uh, they apparently switched to package config recently and they started using personalities? The feature I mentioned for for cross uh, cross build compatibility instead uh, of the wrappers we have. So we I think probably... cross building doesn't really care which implementation we use. Yeah, because uh, it works either way. It, there is no improvement. There is no getting it worse, it just works either way. Yeah, and just, just in this case we won't need to use the wrappers we currently have. So it uh, will reduce we, the complexity of it a bit. No, there is no reduction in complexity because we will use the wrappers because that's what everything in Debian currently does. Getting rid of the wrappers is adding complexity like. So I understand that we can replace them with, with just symlinks to package one. Oh, so you say you just put up some links and then it'll use do the right thing. Probably. Uh, I well, haven't tested this. I haven't thought about it. That's really. complexity inside PKG Conf, and I'm external to that, so I don't care. Oh, you see, uh, here, by the way, the, the way it's implemented, you see, they seem link it to uh, the architecture-specific package conf. That sounds about good. <laughs> So uh, how do we attack this problem? Except, uh, well, obviously the preparation thing, which I, where I so the rebuild, the global rebuild of everything using package config, it, 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 it's a year old rebuild, so it's not no longer that relevant. Um, I've only found very few hard failures, which, cool. which you see, there's not that much red red lines. So pro I haven't retested all of them. Just uh, it's just raw results uh, with um, fail unrelated failures filtered out, basically. Okay. So the rough idea on how to do this is fairly obvious. It's a tool chain transition. Yeah. So the first thing you do is file transition back with release Debian org. Mm -hmm. Include what you're about to do and 
the list of bugs, preferably user tagged bugs. I th yeah. think you already did that. Yeah. This list and ask for a transition slot. Uh, then, of course, prepare the package takeover in experimental. I think you said that Tolev already agreed to the package takeover. Uh, he didn't agree on the takeover itself. I didn't ask him for a takeover. I just asked him, how would you feel about yeah. so transitioning into package code? He said he you, didn't care You do much. need the takeover here. Mm -hmm. And that's what going to happen, and then you're done. Okay, so you prefer that uh, you, you think it's better to take over the binary package instead of trying to patch it everywhere in? No, please don't patch it everywhere. <clears throat> because the difference between these implementations is just so small. Mm -hmm. I think we should rather just fix it up and just ditch the old one. Okay. They, what, what is the benefit in having two implementations of this fairly obvious technology? Uh, it seems a bit like the user merge, everyone else is doing it, so. Regardless of other aspects, we should just do the same, just right. to be compatible with everyone else. So, would the plan then be uh, first, arc the binary package takeover? Yeah, with uh, upload it to experimental. Mm -hmm. so probably we still should provide the old one under an alternative binary package name for a while. Just in case, I don't know, we need an urgent fallback. Figure someone who really needs it or don't. Hmm. You need a use case for the old one. Yeah, probably, yeah, we don't, we don't need much diversity in terms of implementations of package uh, bonds. The problem I see here is at present we have the situation where uh, we have two providers of this functionality. Mm -hmm. And as soon as one of the implementations becomes uninstallable, mm -hmm. it randomly flips over to the other. Okay. Yeah. And that's bad because it makes builds uh, more we'll reproducible. Yeah, unreproducible. And it turns up into surprising failure modes. I've actually seen them. Mm -hmm. So I strongly prefer only one implementation providing it. It's really the same question about user merge. Who would like to support both unmerged and merged at the same time for all longer? No, we don't. Most of us, I suppose, doesn't care. Just make it one way or the other. <coughs> so, the next stop, step will be uh, file a bug with, uh, you said, uh, release team. It's a transition, How matter you, uh, however you turn it. So you need a bug at release Debian org. Get it act, and then you can proceed with the upload. Mm -hmm. And when you upload, you upgrade all your bugs to RC severity. A good way would be to send patches for all of them before yeah. uploading. Obviously. And keep in mind, time is running out. Mm -hmm. This transition needs to be completed by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Uh, when's the uh, freeze, the first? Toolchain freeze, freeze is roughly end of the year. Mm -hmm. Isn't it like something like some of January, right? Mm. Or oh, December, December maybe, I don't remember. It, it's in the loopy. <laughs> so can wait. Yes, so get it done quickly. Uh, if you upload past October, it'll be difficult to sort out. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Right. Hmm. Five is profit. What? What is five? Uh. <laughs> Six is profit, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So we are done, right? More or less, I guess. 
Oh, yeah, one, one more thing. Uh, I tried to get an answer to this question, uh, but uh, I've, I was getting multiple conflicting replies. What is the bog standard way of doing a complete rebuild of whole Debian in Debian? without running your own instance of whatever it's built or BS or something. Well, who should I talk to and um That's a difficult one. I figured the most easy way is doing it on your own hardware. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's what I did, but it, it, I, I, I spent too much money on it, to, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, uh, oh, okay, I have a proposal. Um, let's copy the content of the Etherpad mm -hmm. and create a Gobi file in the in the buff directory of the, the buff? in Gobi. Uh -huh, okay, Gobi. Because uh, after some time, the content of the Etherpad uh, will disappear. They gone. So it's important to have this session uh, registered. So. Yes, open a Gobi and create a Gobi file. This, this and Gobi? Oh, yeah. Yes, Gobi. Go to Debian. <coughs> dot, uh, no, Gobi.debian.org. Yeah, it's already right. Devconf, yeah, both. And then create the, the uh, package file. Yeah. All right. Uh, what's, what's the format of it? I forgot. Is it? Plain text. Just plain text. Yeah. Uh, okay, it didn't go well. It's, it's lost some of the. Yeah, it does lose the formatting. formatting. No, there is no way to include no the formatting way. in Gobi. Okay. It's just plain text. Okay, I, I can just maybe do some uh, yeah. magic Pandoc thing. And, uh, okay, so you're the question about archive rebuild. Mm -hmm. um, if you don't do that, talk to Lukas Nussbaum. Mm -hmm. He's done it multiple times, even if he isn't doing cross. Uh, archive rebuild as a service, mm -hmm. he can give you advice on how to do it. Okay. Uh, if that doesn't work, try contacting Samuel Henrik. Mm -hmm. He, I, I think he knows how to use Amazon, uh, Amazon uh, work credits and he can tell you the right person to contact. He's here. Mm -hmm. Okay. That sounds... What? Why the numbers? Oh. <laughs> oh, well. And given that you already did an archive rebuild, it may be enough to rebuild the remaining packages and the new ones. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just worried that something else might break. Uh, uh, don't don't, don't be too worried if you already did an archive rebuild. Uh, the unseen breakage will be in the order of one percentage, mm -hmm. and that's okay. You yeah, did a good we'll effort. Probably can fix it. Yeah, you don't need to know every single failure in advance. Mm -hmm. If we have this quality on the user merge, that would already be great. Cool. Uh, is it already up there? Can you see it, uh, Jonathan? The uh, Gobi document. Okay, I will check. Because I, I see you online, but... Uh... Yeah, package code. Yes, it is already Okay. There. Because yeah, I, because it shows to me as unsafe, so I was yeah. worried. This is better. Thank you, Andre. Cool. <coughs> <coughs> okay, so I guess then the next thing is just <laughs> start doing it. So I will I will move to the step one of the plan, which is. <laughs> It's like the you can actually parallelize that. So you yep. can ask Tolev and file the release team bug in parallel. Okay. That increases your turnaround. What if? Keep just, in mind just that. Just in theory, what if Tolev says no? <laughs> well, then you have to close the release team bug and okay. you have to figure out why he says no and so on. Okay. Uh, so keep in mind you need a transition slot here. Yep. And the release team may say, not now, but later. And you really do need that slot. So that they can plan. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you get to <coughs> upload your package at the time the release team chooses. So it's also important that you have your changes in experimental 
having passed the new queue? Uh, I forgot what I wanted to say. Anyway, yeah. So, to, uh, if you don't have the package in experimental, mm -hmm. you cannot upload at the time they need it because you need to clear new them. Yeah. So, that needs to be done before. Mm -hmm. I see. Hmm. Oh yeah, since I'm taking over the binary package here, yeah, it means yes. it will go through, through new. So, new takes some time, so I can still do it. So, if, uh, do you have any more questions on the procedural stuff? I don't think so. I have a question of whether we can re get rid of the dpackage hook. The what? The dpackage hook. What can we, what? Can we delete the dpackage hook? Uh, depends. Uh, if we can replace whatever stuff we have for it, or we're using it with yes. the personalities. I'm not sure how exactly that's going to work. I need to check. I haven't read the one page yet. That's so I happen to know the guy <coughs> who wrote the dpackage hook. Mm -hmm. It's, he's sitting here. <laughs> you. And I really hate it. <laughs> Can we Good delete it? Well, if you provide a way to, to get rid of it. Yes, I can. Cool. This, it's um, relatively simple. Uh, you can do without maintainer scripts, without dpackage hook. And the thing is, you move all your files into a new package and you call it pkgconf-bin. So you just rename your package. Okay? And then you create a new package, pkgconf. Well, nice. Now you have a new and empty package. Um, and you make it depend on your dash bin package. So everything looks the same now as mm -hmm. before, except that you have a package in between. So the dependency goes to the pkgconf package, which depends on the dash bin package. Okay. which happens to be multi-arch foreign mm -hmm. because you renamed the multi-arch foreign moves mm -hmm. but pkgconf <coughs> no longer is multi-arch foreign. Yeah. So it can have architecture dependent content mm -hmm. and you can uh, compute those symbolic links at, at build, time. build time and package them up in the otherwise empty pkgconf mm -hmm. package and then you mark it <coughs> multi-arch same and then stuff will magically work mm -hmm. without the package hook Indeed. and without maintainer scripts yeah and the reason we didn't do that is because Toliff didn't like it <laughs> so that's why I came up with this crazy the package hook that broke stuff elsewhere already and I really wish we could go aw do away with it. So in theory, I can do this just right now without anything yes. at all. Yes, you can do it right now. It makes you pass new. But getting rid of the hook is entirely orthogonal to all the rest. Yeah. You can do it in parallel, Obviously. except for the part of clearing new. Yeah. You can do it later, you can do it earlier. Well, it goes through new anyway, so wouldn't it make sense to put two things at once and clear new just once? Um, <coughs> possibly, but uh, it makes you... Uh, you're not able to move it to unstable then. Or you can clear uh, new with both packages being added and then just move the dropping of the hook to unstable and move yeah. the takeover at a later time. Yeah. That could be possible, I'm not entirely sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yeah, you may be able to clear new only once. Do we have any FTP masters around? Probably not, I don't remember. Uh, I happen to not know any FTP masters at the conference. Okay. And everyone else said that, no, they are not here. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess this is it then. Any more 
Any questions from IFC maybe? I don't know. <laughs> let's see. Let's see IFC. <coughs> no questions from IFC. I said I'd forward questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, you, you did. Yeah. <coughs> what? What, 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 what the hell is this message? <laughs> Someone's going to swim in, in, in the swimming pool. Okay, that's a good, good question. We, we, are not, we are not, we don't have any swimming pools around, so. And that's it. <coughs> okay. So currently, which are the most needed um, challenges in package um, conf and what do you need to improve more this work? I'm not, I'm not sure. What, what's the question again? What do you need to improve? Yes, what, what do you need the most to improve the, the package conf um, features or what is the most needed right now? Sorry, what, what, what? What's the problem we are trying to solve? By migrating? By migrating, yeah. <coughs> well. Thank you, Ferenc. We'll, we'll, have, we'll have sync to basically, uh, to, uh, we'll be close in, the, in terms of package config implementations to other distributions. We'll have a more modern system. Uh, we'll probably have one less uh, tricky bit like of our own code in uh, in the package because we can use this personality feature which doesn't exist in other uh, implementation and uh, hopefully we can convince <coughs> more upstream more projects upstream to use package config which is what we discussed early uh, with LOVM and Postgres Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andre, and everybody to yeah. attending. Thank you for coming. Keep enjoying. <laughs>